Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the world premiere of Nina. Give it up for Elisa Richembel, one of the main actors, and Olga Haidas, the director of this beautiful film. Please join us on stage, ladies. Thank you. Oh. Uh, it's hi. Hi. Congrats. Congrats. Okay. Can hear me now? You, you can hear me now. Um, well, how do you feel? Because uh, this was the, really the first time ever being screened somewhere. Yes, I mean... Start with you, Olga, because you've seen it many, many, many times, of course, but... I have, but I have never had this, like, public, uh, public experience, you know, of, of seeing it, so... And I'm very happy and excited it was here, and it was, like, world premiere, and... Uh, really, thank you for this. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, you haven't seen anything at all since the shoot, yes. so... It was premiere of the premiere. How did your <laughs> emotions go during these last two hours? Oh, you know, it was very strange to yeah? see this movie in the hall. But anyway, I really like it and Ooh. I hope you enjoy the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Ooh. I think uh, from... Uh, yeah, yeah, indeed. Give it up for this uh, impressive um, film from Poland. I say uh, everyone in Poland, uh, congratulations, because there are more people watching in Poland as well. Uh, everyone are watching abroad, please join in the conversation. We have this uh, hashtag, hashtag live cinema, <laughs> and of course the telephone number. I think it's still on the screen. You can use it for uh, sending us uh, WhatsApp messages. Uh, feel free, you can ask almost everything. Uh, let's go to uh, Willem Main. She says, what a beautiful story. Well, there you go. Uh, you. Yolanda you. from Spain has a very specific question I see. Uh, uh, Magda, well, that's, uh, that's a question for you then. How do you pee when standing up? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you know, this is this, I don't know how this is thing. Yeah, it's like this, uh, this rubber this uh, pee machine. This is the special it <laughs> machine. It, exi machine. Yes. Yeah. it actually exists. I mean, you can like actually buy it online and, and you can have it, it's rubber. And this is from silicon and. Yeah, sorry, uh, that was <laughs> no. just, just my brains. Thinking yeah. over uh, <laughs> how you do this. I have and the same. It's very septic, you know, because P is septic, so it's all. <laughs> yes, and but but it's the plus out in Dutch. I think it, it, it's in uh, other countries as well. I, I did remember. You, did you ever experience? Uh, yeah, I like remember that? ads was, uh, ad for this when I was growing up in the the feminist zines that I would read. But I've never I've never seen one in film before. So you maybe have said a new. You can hardly see it anyways because it's so dark that you know. Yeah. But when I saw it, I said, "Oh, I've seen an ad for that before." <laughs> <laughs> yes, it exists. So now I could see it in action. <laughs> to, f to finish that subject, it, it was not a film pee, you literally peed, right? On cue. <laughs> yeah, well, let's get in details it right real. away. It wasn't real. It wasn't real. <laughs> oh, fortunately. I, That's I, a good thing. I promised her that I would maybe cut it out because we could finish the scene when she's just, you know, closing the door of the car, but, yeah. you know, I lied. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, uh, Olga, you've been working on this project. Quite a while, right? That's uh, a nice way. Yes, to yeah. It, yes. Uh, to say the <laughs> least, uh, yes. it's it's an intensive project. Where did the idea start for for this one? Well, I I can't even remember. I mean, you know, I wrote the first version of the script uh, years back, and uh, the, the core of the story stayed the same. But after a few years, uh, Marta Konarzewska joined me, and uh, she sort of like took over and like uh, read life into those characters, and then gave some like real you know, like input, you know, to, into the, the, you know, LGBT world, because I forgot how it is. And, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, in, and in the last phase, you know, Yulia Kiyovska um, playing Nina, you know, she, she like, like uh, put her own, you know, like uh, depth into it. And, and sort of, so it was a collaboration, but I'm, I'm just so happy that, you know, it, it, we sort of like finished. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, it, it Are there moments in a production like this that yeah, you, you start thinking, hey, maybe, we it's just it. leave it here because it's it's not going anywhere. I mean, uh, someone just told me that it's just the beginning, but uh, you know it, it's still nice because after so many years and so many people helping on the way. By the way, uh, Kasia Adamik is here, the editor of the film. Yes. Say hi. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, Congratulations. It, it's uh, it's also her debut in this role because she she she's a director herself. So and she just thought she's gonna hey let's edit. Yes. Um, <laughs> And, and, and yes, you know, like uh, after a, a, a few years, you know, like uh, the, the producers, uh, Felix Pastuszek and Darius Petrykowski came on board and uh, they were the first one in Poland to actually believe in this 
particular project in, on this particular theme. Yeah. And so I'm very thankful for that. And uh, it took us a few years, you know, to get financing, to put this all together, and, you know, like, it, it's here. It yeah. happened. Uh, Kiva, um, our film critic, um, uh, you've been watching the film, of course. Uh, what's your take on the theme uh, of tonight? Well, yeah, and I, we think we touched on it a bit, too, already of this. We've been hearing a lot about the political climate in Poland is, you know, quite conservative at the moment. I know you've been working on the film for a while, but to put this film out in the world now, what, is that, what does that mean to you? Well, it was never really a social statement, so I was never, you know, like a rebel, you know, like uh, with this uh, theme. But it, it, it is true that, you know, once the government changed, uh, we actually did get the financing, so I can't complain. But still, you know, the situation in Poland is not, uh, not uh, all, all colorful as we wish it would be, you know, and then uh, it's not going to change in, in the next couple of years, I suppose. Uh, which is a pity. You, do you experience on a daily basis or that, that, that the atmosphere is changing or? The, the atmosphere is changing, like on, on, on various, you know, like occasions and in different, different uh, situations. Uh, you know, like people go on streets, you know, and, and protest, but it doesn't do anything. So, so I think we're just this, you know, island in Europe right now where things are going to change. The question is in which direction. Yeah, but, but mm -hmm. uh, we have to explain because there are also people watching from Zimbabwe, for example. Uh, Poland is traditionally a quite conservative Catholic uh, country, so it's not the easiest environment to be LGBTQI plus or anything uh, in that. Uh, yes, order. but you know, like being like in the artistic, you know, environment, you can't really, you know, experience that mm. all that much. But yes, you know, like LGBTQ community in Poland is not, uh, is not doesn't have it easy. No. But still, if you watch the film, uh, uh, is there a po political statement in there, or, or is that not... Well, actually, you know, the, 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 the LGBTQ community that we do, like, impose in the film, is a bit nicer than in real life. I mean, one thing, we don't have any lesbian clubs in Warsaw. Hmm. We have gay clubs, we have lesbian parties from time to time, we don't have lesbian clubs. So I thought, you know, hey, let's make it a bit nicer and funnier <laughs> than it actually is. Make your own world. Ma make our own, you know, like, fun and, and crazy world. Uh, and, and this is sort of like, a, you know, like a, a dream come true. We do want this world to be like this. We, we, do, we do wish, you know, the Warsaw would look like this. Yeah. So it is like sort of like with the, the Warsaw we show here is like one in transformation. Mm. Like even if the buildings, you know, people who actually know Warsaw will know that, you know, there's a few buildings that no longer exist. And sort of like this transformation that we try to embrace, you know, is like also in mental way. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, Elisa, do you... Do you uh, concur. Uh, what? <laughs> do you concur? <laughs> uh, yeah, but also if you, if you look around your s uh, in your own situation, do you feel that the conservative environment is uh, holding you down or... Um, uh, do you feel anything about this political change in uh, in Poland? Yes, of course I do, because, you know, this is my country, this is my, my government. But in what way, for example? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I really like, I, I don't like it, but I really like this, that we have to be together right now and we have to go to protest. And I can see the whole people, so many women, yeah. together and... I hope this movie will be something great for um, for our community because uh, because this is about about relationships yeah about something very important mm. and about dialogue yeah. also yeah. Mm -hmm. um. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, uh, positive input from people all over the world. Kobe from Tel Aviv uh, says, great film, thank you for the inspiration. Uh, Justina from Amsterdam, and there I go with my best Polish, I think. Je no, well, maybe you can read it. Um, it's better. Justina being the film, yeah, I can see that. Can you see that? Uh, like girls, beautiful film. Yeah, beauty, beauty movie, and then uh, a Polish in the beginning. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's for you. Um, uh, Peter from Zimbabwe says, uh, Nina, uh, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, thank you very much for sharing this great festival experience with us in Harare. Um, um, but let's go back to the movie because um, um, you said it was an intentional uh, a political statement, but in the environment you're living in, it, be it will be might be become uh, a strong pilot political statement. Yes. Uh, which is good. Yeah, which is good. And do you, do, wh what do you expect? Is it something that people are open to well, in Poland? Well, you know, I'm just hoping that people will go and see it in the movies and will start, you know, like you said, dialogue. That we'll start talking and we'll see that, you know, there's nothing, you know, like to be against. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I'm so interested if it's just on a government level uh, changing, or is it also in the um, real environment in the society as you experience it? Well, you know, the society that I, I live in is uh, is cold. The society that uh, the government is not that cool. But you know, we're trying to talk, and yeah. I think that's the the, the 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 basics. You know, like let's talk. Let's 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 see how that goes. Yeah. Nobody's no mm, you know interrupting anybody. Yeah. But uh, are you easily open? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all warm and fuzzy. I'm great. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, okay. <laughs> no worries there. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Kiva, about fuzziness, uh, uh, we have uh, this beautiful uh, installation uh, of the womb, right? Yes, yeah, and I'm I, uh, Natalia Bajowska. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so I was reading a bit about her work, uh, but let, let's show the clip first, and then we can talk a bit about okay. that. Fajnie. So she she is a Polish installation artist, or yeah, she's an artist. Uh, and this uh, this installation in particular was meant to mimic uh, a womb yeah. in a space that was basically free from any kind of societal norms, you know, pre-birth and before anything's imposed on you, um, all of us. Uh, I'd love to know more about when you first encountered her work and why why you wanted to in include it in the film. We too. actually read uh, a piece about her uh, in the newspaper, Marta Konarzewska, the, the, the co-writer. Uh, so the original installation does no longer exist. It was just, just a one, one-time event. Uh, but like you said, you know, Natalia Bajowska had, uh, you know, like this ideology, you know, that it's supposed to be this place where you hide, where you, like, uh, were free, you know, before you were born. And, uh, but the, the actual place was no longer there, you know, like not even, you know, parts of it. Uh, so we reached out to, to the artist and, and asked for permission to build our own. Plus, you know, we needed one that we can like go into with a camera, you know, like that has some light a little bit, you know, at least. So uh, there is some uh, like um, uh, changes to it, to the construction itself. Uh, Anna Nasovic, our production designer, she did a wonderful job building it. Uh, but the, the concept uh, is there, you know, the actual concept of Natalia Bajowska. Mm -hmm. And did she, w how did she feel to be included in the film as well? Because, as, you know, as you said, the original doesn't exist and now this I, will I exist she forever. Hasn't she hasn't seen the film yet, so no, I don't know, but, yeah, but she, yeah. she seems excited, you know. We, mm -hmm. we, we write, you know, from time to time and uh, she, she's uh, keeping her fingers crossed and, and well, she'll see it eventually. Yeah. We should have an installation like that uh, at home everywhere, yeah, it's right? It's wonderful. A, yeah. a personal they, one. They didn't want to leave it, you know? No, yeah, I can't understand. It was my understand. best day. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, oh God, it was Valentine's Day, actually. That's funny. Yes. We shot it on <laughs> Valentine's Day, this particular <laughs> scene. <laughs> Um, uh, Olga, uh, you, uh, this is uh, your story, you co-wrote the, uh, the script, of course, um, uh, so there's a lot of Olga in there. There are two strong characters, female ca characters. Um, is that both a little bit of Olga? That, that's actually funny, because like when I started writing, I thought I was Magda, for mm -hmm. different reasons. I mean, uh, so the, the story itself is not personal, spirit, yeah. but like the, the character is a little bit you know, like, like influenced by, by me. I used to write uh, Drive uh, 105. And I uh, did crash it, <laughs> um, and some other stuff as well. Uh, but you know, like w with the time going by, I, I realized I'm turning into Nina, this this grumpy, thirty-something-year-old, you know, okay. like with problems. And uh, and and yeah, it's it's funny how how like it, it appears that it's the same person in a way. And you're still there, or are you also liberated like Nina is liberated at the end? I, I think I went to liberation. Yeah. Yes. What what made you liberated? Making this movie. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, because you, know you just what? finished, so the liberation yes. is very fresh and new. Yes. Then you were grumpy a week ago. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, good for you. Um, uh, about the end, there are uh, two uh, uh, good questions, actually. Uh, one is a comment uh, from uh, Blank at All Your Words on Twitter. He says, or she says, thank you for the beautiful movie. Really glad it was not another bury, bury Your Gaze movie with a depressing ending. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, it was uh, always my, my goal to have this like this happy end yeah. in a way. I know it's not happy end per se, but it's, it's it gives an opening. Yes. Yeah. Do do we have to feel sorry about the husband? <laughs> do, you, do you feel? Do you? 
<laughs> do you? Well, I don't know. He ha he, well, he has no control whatsoever, to say the least, of his own life and uh, of what's happening around him. Right? Yes, because he loves her so much. Yeah. And I never wanted to like create this character that you know you feel from the start that she's gonna leave him. I wanted him to be nice, but uh, you know, like people dump each other. That things happen. You know, she fell in love. You know, that's a love uh, story. You yeah. Know? Okay. So no. I mean, sympathy for the. For it, the yes, man. of course. As a, as anybody who gets dumped. Yes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> also about the end. Uh, uh, no, there was another question uh, we had about the end. If the ending was intentional like that, or is that something you changed during uh, the no, production? No, no, it was film? actually as as we wrote it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, about the also in the end, a deer. <laughs> Why was seeing the deer for her uh, for her a turning point to make up her mind? What was the the uh, metaphor? I'm not sure if on? you noticed, but throughout the film, she she sees a deer being shot when she leaves uh, her parents' place. So and then she tells the dream in the womb, right in the the, the birthplace. So she 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 tells you know the dream to to Magda that you know she's alone on a highway and nobody stops. So like in the end, we sort of like combined this this dream of hers with the vision of a deer, which sort of represents her, like, like this, this, this creature that's, you know, like uh, naive, fresh, and, and, you know, trustworthy. And it doesn't get shot. Ah, okay, that's why, that's for Maybe Jacqueline too much. Uh, yeah. No, 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 it's a good It's supposed to work like subconsciously, you know, you're not supposed to analyze it that much. Okay, but <laughs> we're, we're in the <laughs> analyzing part, I'm afraid, so I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, okay. And it's a question you're from Jacqueline. You're putting me out of a job. We have to respect <laughs> the questions. Um, uh, Eliza, for you, because, uh, um, it's an, uh, quite an intense role. Uh, 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 were you convinced right away that it, this was the, the script you wanted to play and you felt f uh, uh, at ease with it? You know, firstly, I was uh, very afraid of this script mm -hmm. and I talked with... I spoke with Olga and I said, firstly, afraid that I'm what afraid way then? Of, the, of the script, yeah. of well, the well. character, because, you know, there are many naked scenes. Um, this is very strong character, and I felt that I wasn't sure if I can do this and if I am ready to do this. Uh -huh. But one day I woke up and I've decided that I have to do this and I really want to do this, and and I think it was a good decision because I. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, because. It was something special in my life, and it was a very strange moment, um, and it changed something. It changed, um, the, it changed my thinking about actress, acting, and what is this? Yeah, uh, uh, what, what exactly changed your... That's uh, what body means for the actors, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, you know, mm, the technique is very important, and sometimes you have to... Uh, you have to put away your emotional and you have to just be with somebody. Yeah. Because it, it, it looks extremely natural and as if you can completely relate with the story and the character uh, Magda is. But uh, are you close in real life with the character? In the, uh, um, or are you completely different? Probably uh, in some way we are close together because this is part of me. Anyway, nothing was, um, you know, unexpected. I mean, we had pre uh, prepare. Uh, we did rehearse for a while. We had rehearsal yeah. before, sure. so you know, I was, I met uh, Julia. Uh, yes, Julia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and it's been a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I feel I felt very comfortable with. Yeah. and yeah. with Olga also and with the whole crew. Yeah. Everybody was so generous. I, I could imagine that because uh, uh, maybe I'm being very uh, um, a soft guy now, but I, I, all the emotions were very raw. Sometimes I thought, where is the love? Um, especially bet between the, the ladies, uh, it, it went better, but still there was this 
this strong drive behind everything. Where did that come from? Maybe it's my inner anger. Is that your inner anger? No, no, I don't know. No, I think, you know, like, we're, like, really... Do you understand what I mean? Yes, yes, I, I know what you mean. I think, you know, it's because our main goal was to, like, give actors, you know, this, this feeling of intimacy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Tom, Tom McNamee with the DOP, you know, you know managed to, to, like, create this atmosphere of, of not, like, giving too much light and, and everything. So the actors really could think about their work, not about, you know, all those lamps around them. So maybe... Th that way we we managed to like create this really like like inner emotional state for all of them and um, I, I did want to like create you know the, this different emotional state for each and one of them yeah like to have this original story and and if it tr you know transforms it, it's great. Uh, so yeah. somewhere it, c it could be translated as uh, almost aggressive uh, now and then uh, no, maybe. No? No, okay. I don't think it's a great Just thing. me being sensitive. <laughs> yes. Okay. I that more than me, I guess. Okay, but Kifa, did you have that? Yeah, or just when you were mentioning the color schemes, because it, I find it so interesting in the, the visual palette, you know, it has these cool, hard grays and blue tones, and then shifts to these really warm, lush reds, um, you know, even when we're not inside, inside the womb. That sounds <laughs> very intimate. Um, but can you talk a bit about that and working with the DOP, the cinematography, and establishing this, the, the texture of the uh -huh. world you are creating? Well, uh, first thing is that, because we, we were very inspired by Nan Golding's photography, mm -hmm. and uh, we knew from the very start that we want to create this picture that is um, sort of retro in a good way, that is, it's as if you were like watching old photography. So Tomek came up with this, this brand new camera, Panasonic Vericam, you know, it, which is very sensitive, hence you don't need to light it all that much. Uh, but then we didn't want the picture to be so new and sharp, you know, like like full of technology. So he sent his guys, you know, to Belarus to buy those those old, you know, Zenit lenses. Mm -hmm. I think the most expensive one was for three hundred dollars or something. Mm -hmm. And they created, you know, the, this this way to c combine the the brand new camera. You know, I think it was the first film uh, uh, shot on 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 this very cam oh, wow. with those crappy sh lenses, you know, like scratched and with you know, letting light go in different funny places. Uh -huh. So, so you know, like, these two things uh, gave us this unique look, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, the, 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 you know, one to 65, you know, like, frame, which is not that popular anymore. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because it gives you, like, like this, this idea of, like, like, really looking into the center, mm -hmm. getting uh, into the story. Uh, Frank uh, jumps uh, on this theme a little bit. He asks, uh, he's from Rotterdam, Frankie, uh, what's your inspiration for this film? Like, um, life. movie life. inspirations. <laughs> Maybe you've been watching a lot of uh, m inspirational movies to, well, to get mean, in the. I mean, it's it's hard to s talk about inspiration now because, like I said, you know, the script was you know like mm -hmm. written years back. Yeah. But when we were like, actually preparing for the film, yeah, it was Nan Golding's photography, also mm -hmm. Tom Heido's uh, album called Intimate Distances. I think it's a great title, you know, for an album, which is good for us. And uh, also Le Mepri, um by Godard, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, in, in a way it's an homage to, to this picture. Uh -huh. um, Aneta from Rotterdam says, it was great to watch, amazing action, and I love the music. Um, I'm getting a surprise for you. <laughs> uh, where, d where did you get the idea for the music uh, from? Uh, le, 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 le no, just continue. Just he, oh, he does this. He d I do yeah. this sometimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's weird. He'll, he'll be back. Uh, yes, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, like... Uh, Weird is my thing, so... Uh, oh, it's great! That's it, They're that's why. Good surprises. Just to lighten the mood a little. <laughs> uh, maybe you can pop. Do you want to pop it? Maybe you want to pop it? Well, okay. Me? No. But the music, well, because oh, uh, it's yeah, a strong actually, you know, soundtrack. Like, uh, it, it's amazing. I'm, I'm so happy because, you know, like, uh, I wanted to work uh, with, with Andrzej Smolik. You know, he's this amazing Polish musician. Uh, I didn't want to have, a, like, a, a composed music music. I wanted to have something, you know, special with a guy, you know, who thinks out of the box. And I showed Andrzej the music. He had some inspiration, you know, like, Kasia put some nice temp music, you know, in the cut. Ooh. Yes. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> So, so we started working, and I, I, I must say that you know, like it was amazing. You know, I think you yeah. really embraced the, the sort of um, feeling of a still music, because that was our main goal to have the music that 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 is still, that Thank that you. is you know, like sort of as if you breathe in <laughs> and can't let out. You're very good at uh, pouring yes. uh, glasses yeah, and I'm talking at the same time. This that's is a great very talent. Good I have to say that. That's yeah. long time um, experience. You know, that's that's uh, <laughs> practice. Years of practice. Years of practice. Oh, thank you so much. I'll uh, cheers to that, and I'll cheers to uh, the world premiere of your beautiful movie. Congratulations. How do you, how do you say cheers in, in Polish? Polish. Zdrowie. Zdrowie. That's Dutch. Oh, okay. Yes, okay, Polish. There you yes. go. Zdrowie. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. 
Alpha Panda. Um, Alpha Panda says on Twitter, seeing IFFR live for the first time, what an extremely well-produced live cinema experience and very happy for our <laughs> friends from Nina. Great world premiere. Thank you, uh, That's Panda. for you and for the people in the back. Give them a warm round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Um, because uh, they make this happen. Um, Dave from Zimbabwe says, it's been worth it. Let's do this again next year, IFFR Live. Uh, I'm just uh, um, uh, reading this out loud because this is the last screening we're doing this year. The festival is uh, until next weekend, but the IFFR Live um, uh, segment of the program um, is finished uh, with a world premiere. We're very happy with that. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in from all over the world. Uh, thank you, everyone in Rotterdam. You've been fantastic as well. Um, and uh, you can still watch many films, uh, because if you're uh, getting in the mood, you can continue watching uh, um, beautiful movies on the VOD platform of IFFR. So that's IFFR Unleashed. Uh, go there and see a lot of movies, and let's say, see you next year. Kifa, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. See you next year. Bye-bye. Congratulations.